Hi, my name is Mike Smith. I'm a security specialist with Salesforce. Today's topic is Salesforce Shield platform encryption. I've been asked by customers, why can't we just encrypt everything? That's our policy. Let's take a look at Salesforce's multi-tenant architecture to shed some light on this question. In early 2017, a laptop with highly sensitive information was stolen from the car of a secret service agent in Brooklyn, New York. The disk on this laptop was said to have contained the floor plans and evacuation protocol for Trump Tower. The entire disk was encrypted, and if done properly, no secrets should have been compromised. The incident was widely cited, however, by security companies to highlight the importance of full disk encryption. When we get questions about encrypting files and data at rest, they often seem to be from this perspective of mobile devices, such as laptops, that are at risk of being lost, stolen, or perhaps carelessly disposed of. But it's different when we're talking about data stored in secure data centers in the cloud. We make it really hard to get in. And the chances of a bad character walking out with one of our storage devices is extremely remote. Alarm bells would go off left and right. Also, the data is stored using RAID in the storage arrays and then multiple LUNs into the database for the various partitions. So they couldn't get what they need from a single disk anyway. It's just not that simple. Still, certain customers, regulators, and security professionals want assurances that their data is encrypted when it's stored on Salesforce devices, and many of them also want control of the encryption key lifecycle. And that's where Shield comes in. Salesforce Shield platform encryption is based on a number of key principles, including the ability to strongly encrypt data at rest natively in the cloud, giving customers control over the lifecycle of their encryption keys, while preserving critical business functionality. And all of this is done without requiring the customer to provide any additional hardware or software. At Salesforce, trust is our top priority. Not only are you keeping your sensitive data in your Salesforce org, you're also building functionality vital to your company's success on our platform. Our responsibility to keep your data and functionality safe is not something we take lightly, which is why we're always transparent about our services. Our trust site, trust.salesforce.com, is a vital resource. You can use it to view performance statistics and to get more information about how we secure your data. So this scalawag taking off with a Salesforce customer's data in his bag, well, that just ain't happening. But still, regulators, partners, customers of customers, and others sometimes say, you got to encrypt the data at rest. That's our policy. So let's take a look at how Salesforce data is stored. First, we need to understand that Salesforce is a multi-tenant cloud, meaning that all the data and metadata are stored using shared infrastructure and services. It's like living in an apartment. You have your own private space, but you share the water bill, maybe a backup generator, and access to the gym. In the cloud, what you are sharing is the underlying infrastructure and services, including the network, certain security features, and the database. It's convenient to think of an object in Salesforce as being mapped to a table in the underlying database. But in reality, Building a cloud application development platform that attempts to manage a vast, ever-changing set of actual database structures on behalf of each application and tenant would be next to impossible as the service grows. Instead, the Force.com storage model manages virtual database structures using a set of metadata, data, and pivot tables. We won't go deep into this now, but I encourage you to read more about the Force.com multi-tenant architecture in the Salesforce developer community. In the actual database, you'll notice that there's not a single table per object. Instead, it's all stored together, whether the data is for accounts, contacts, opportunities, 
or other standard or custom objects. Each row includes identifying fields, such as the Global Unique Identifier, or GUID, the organization that owns the row, or the org ID, and the encompassing object identifier. The actual data values are stored in a series of values columns, which tie back to the object's fields, along with identifiers back to the relevant object and org. The application layer interprets all of this at runtime, with strict security controls to limit who has access to each and every piece of data. And notice now that data from different orgs is stored in the same space, differentiated at the database layer by the org ID. Again, it's up to the application layer to enforce who gets to see what. As you can imagine, if somebody were to get a hold of the data at this level, they would have a very hard time piecing it back together. You've really got to go through the application layer to make sense of it. This multi-tenant architecture is at the heart of the scalability and maintainability that Salesforce is able to provide to its many diverse customers, small and large, worldwide. Still, there are forces at work. Regulatory agencies, for example, or policies of partners who demand assurance and who dictate that data stored at rest should be encrypted, while letting customers control their own key lifecycle. So let's take a closer look at the types of data that are being stored here. Suppose there were a breach. Even if someone had the data, would they be able to make sense of it if they didn't know who it belonged to? Looking at the data here, some values are useless without knowing who they belong to. Dates, or dollar values, for example, are meaningless without the person's name or other identifying information. There's this concept of personally identifiable information, or PII. Best practice is to protect it closely. If this can't be compromised, the rest doesn't matter. So Salesforce gives customers the ability to encrypt data selectively by checking a box on the setup screen to protect identities or other values that are deemed to be necessary to protect private or sensitive information. So we'll add an indicator that a field is encrypted, along with the information that can be used to securely derive or retrieve the appropriate key for encryption or decryption. By encrypting this personal information, we are able to effectively de-identify the data that is stored on each record. And since this encryption capability is native to the Salesforce platform, we are able to preserve critical application functionality along the way. Remember, a key principle of Salesforce Shield platform encryption is to allow customers to control the lifecycle of their own encryption keys. If that were not the case, then encrypting the entire data store with a shared key would make sense. But this requirement demands a different approach in a multi-tenant architecture. And I'll emphasize this again. This multi-tenant architecture is Salesforce's secret sauce. It is what allows Salesforce to support over 150,000 customers on a single code base, delivering continuous innovation along the way. For more information on derivation of encryption keys, search YouTube for my video on Salesforce platform encryption key derivation. Now that PII is stored encrypted at rest, and you control the encryption key lifecycle, you can check an important box because you meet policy requirements and you are happy. And perhaps, as importantly, so are your auditor, your CISO, and anyone who wants that extra bit of assurance that your data is as secure as it can be. Thank you for watching. For more on this and other topics, follow me on Twitter at MoreMikeSmith.